Hello everyone and welcome to Clay Formations. I'm going to tell you a story of how the worms of the forest were tired of living in the dirt while the birds got to fly through the air, live in their warm, cozy birdhouses, and slurping the worms up like spaghetti whenever they were hungry. So one day all of the worms got together and had a meeting and decided to set things straight. From among the tangled masses, they chose the strongest worm warrior and sent him out at 4 a.m. in the morning to get even with those birds. And to this day, his legend is known throughout the forest as the early worm who gets the bird. This is his story. Oh dear, how am I gonna make this monstrosity? Well, maybe I'll start with some wire. Straightening this wire is a pain in the butt, so I think I'm going to try something new. Just a flick of the wrist and... Hey, that was pretty sweet. I think to keep the worm's body a consistent shape, I'm just going to put some aluminum foil over the wire and then bend it into the shape I need it to be. I always have a hard time determining how thick I need something to be. Usually I always make it a little too thick, so I'm going to try to be conservative this time. I still haven't determined whether I'm going to put ultralight or epoxy sculpt on it yet. So now I'll attach it to my jig and bend it into its pose. I'll bend the wire over here so that the uh, aluminum foil has something to grab onto. That way it won't spin when I put the clay on it. This little guy is going to have himself a nice little set of sharp chompers, so I'm going to use the Super Sculpey Beige mixed with uh, red flocking to make his gums. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. We are going to make some Tic Tacs. See, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of training to make Tic Tacs just right, as you can see. Oh, I mean teeth. We're making some teeth. <laughs> I've done this so much, you guys know the drill. Put them on the pie pan, texturize them, bake them, and you're ready to go. Gee, that was a bit dramatic just for a set of teeth. Let's lighten things up a little bit here. I decided to preset the teeth on the table here so that way I could determine the right size and shape. Then I would only have to align the teeth one time. And of course that's what life is all about, saving time, because it's the only thing we can't make more of or replace. That's right, with each Clay Formations video you get one free piece of philosophical advice. Take it, run with it, make the best of it. Or you can just tell me to shut up and get back to sculpting. I think I'm better at sculpting than philosophizing anyway. I think. Anyway, let's add some more clay to make a gum line. The only regret I had on this one is I made the teeth a little too shallow on the top, so I really didn't have much room to make a gum line. Made it a little difficult. Oh well, can't win them all. Now I'll scrape away a little bit of the clay to refine it a little bit. Use my loop tool to push the clay down in between the teeth. Right now I'm creating a preliminary gum line. After I texturize it a little with the brush, I'll have to go over it again with my smaller loop tool. Then I'll add some festooning with my ball stylus brush texture, clean the teeth off with a paintbrush and add a few more detail refinements and then it's pretty much done. Yes, you too can have teeth just like this if you brush and floss twice a day. Bet you're wondering what this guy needs these kind of teeth for. Stick around and you'll find out. Let's strengthen this guy up with some epoxy sculpt. We don't have to be too fancy with this, just get it around him to strengthen him up so when we put the clay on he won't bend. Now while this cures, let's move on to the next part of the sculpture. You're gonna love it. Early Worm is going to need a place to set his trap. 
He thought what's a better place than hiding out in a birdhouse and any innocent unsuspecting bird that comes by thinking that he's got a free home will find early worm there waiting for him. What happens next is anybody's guess. We'll make a base and a post for the birdhouse to sit on. Actually, it looks more like a paper towel holder. Anyway, we'll drill a hole into the bottom of the birdhouse. Find the right size drill bit and drill away. Make sure the dowel fits. Drill a hole into the post. Put the dowel into the post and then put the house on top of the dowel. So far so good. Now we can move on to gluing everything together. Now that everything's glued together, we can go on to painting the birdhouse. I've always wanted to paint a birdhouse. I always thought I could do a pretty good job. And in a few minutes, you're gonna realize that I don't know how to paint birdhouses very well at all. I will say one thing about painting birdhouses, it's probably best if you put a primer coat on it first because man, that wood soaks up the paint. Oh my, what a lovely shade of blue. Oh God, somebody stop him. It looks terrible. You don't like that color, do you? Me neither. Let's give this thing a spin and put the right color on. Much better. Now we'll move on with the rest of the painting, and this time we'll do it right. I think Early Worm's trap is coming out very well, don't you? It looks real to me. Hopefully it'll look real to a bird. I know that's what Early Worm wants. And with everything painted nicely, Early Worm's trap is baited and ready to go. And now let's put the clay over this monstrosity of a worm. Oh, excuse me. He prefers to be called Early Worm. Don't forget that. Or you might end up between his teeth. Early Worm's family was eaten by a group of birds many, many years ago. He was very small, doesn't remember much, all he knows that it was very traumatic for him. After all, being an orphan worm is very hard. You don't have legs or feathers or wings or anything for that matter. So Early Worm decided he was going to grow a set of teeth. And with those teeth, he would seek his revenge against the birds that ate his family and all other worms of the forest. As the years went by, his legend grew, and birds feared him throughout the forest. No bird knew where he would strike. And there was no bird who ever came up against the early worm would survive. No one knows where early worm is now. All the birds only know that he's out there, somewhere, never knowing the next birdhouse that they enter if he would be there waiting for them. We can only hope that one day the early worm will get his revenge. But until then, the birds of the forest must be cautious and watch out for him, because you never know when the early worm will get the bird again. Now that you know a little bit more of the story of the early worm, we can continue on with the sculpture. Right now I'm making a set of lips that stretch around his massive gums and teeth. He just lay down some strips of clay over the mouth area and then just blend them in with loop tools, rake tools, and brushes. I wanted him to look like he was really biting down hard and the muscles within his lips were contracting. That 
that's coming along nicely. Now I noticed right here, this part of the worm anatomy is called the cellatillum. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm sure I didn't. Anyway, it's an elongated part and it's slightly raised just before the head of the worm. I have no idea what it's for, but when I put the ring around it, it didn't look right, so I had to add a little more clay to it, then it looked okay. I have to make sure I get these things right, you know. Adding some holes that I'll use for later on. And now to make some wings for our feathered victims. I mean birds. <laughs> now of course these feathers are really large so I have to cut them down to tiny bird size. One drawback of making feathers like this is it's really messy. Make sure you have a vacuum handy because you need to get up all the little tiny pieces. Now that all our feathers are cut, we can make the wings. One thing about using feathers is they're incredibly light and the slightest breath or breeze can blow them away, so you have to tape them down. Now to take some wire and some glue and glue the wings together. Hopefully the parchment paper kept them from sticking. Well, they came out alright. Not too bad. Now we'll have to make some little bird feet. First you take out four strands of very thin wire, twist them together, and then you make the little feet. Just like that. Now to cover them in cosplay. I'll need them to be a little flexible. Here's our little birdie victims. Oh my goodness, whatever is going to happen to these precious little creatures? I have no idea. I guess we'll have to put the wings and feet on so we can find out. After I glue the feet in, I'll use a small piece of feather to cover up the wire. Now with Early Worms Victims done, we can continue. However, I won't be using the blue and purple pastels. I found that the brown worked just fine. I will be using the red for the gums. I really like using this pastel technique. It really makes it look like an airbrush did it. And I'm terrible at airbrushing. Using a bigger brush for the wider areas. Now we'll put some red shading around the gums. Now we'll shade his teeth a little bit. And now we'll give a gloss coat to those little pearly whites. Now we'll put Early Worm inside of his birdhouse trap. How in the world does he fit in there? Now we'll attach some wire into those holes we made earlier. What could these be for? Maybe they could be for our feathered victims. Hmm, there's one. He looks okay. Yeah, that one looks okay too. Well, this is interesting. What in the world? Ooh. That kind of looks like, ooh, yeah, that does not look good. Oh yeah, looks like you got him.
All right, if you've made it this far, you are a rock star. Thank you so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. If you think I deserve it, give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to take a look at another video up there in the right hand corner, you can see a video called Deadeye the Shark. And as always, a big thank you to my subscribers. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. Take care and we'll see you next time. Thank you.